Welcome, this is Information Service Engineering. This is lecture number two, Natural Language Processing, part two. In this very first part of the second lecture, we will talk about finite state automata. So, when you remember, last time in the lecture, one of the last lectures, we talked about regular expressions. And we used regular expressions for our first analysis of natural language. So, one thing we didn't say there is that regular expressions are one way to characterize so-called regular languages. Probably you have heard about the language hierarchy according to Chomsky. So in computer science there is a hierarchy of formal languages and regular languages are the most simple languages and they can usually be recognized uh, with the help of a so-called finite state automaton. So regular languages usually can be characterized as you know with regular expressions they can be recognized and characterized also with a finite state automaton and as you already might know to generate a regular language you can do this based on a so-called regular grammar but we don't talk about formal languages today we will need the finite state automaton for recognizing and for analyzing natural language expressions and i will show you in this lecture how this works so first of all, let's define what is a finite state automaton. A finite state automaton is an abstract model of a computer, a rather simple computer, of course. What can it do? It can read an input string. And by reading that input string, it usually changes its internal state, of course, depending on the current input symbol. And by doing that, in the end, the finite state automaton can either accept or reject the input string. So you see here a small model as a graph, the finite state automaton. You see here the nodes and you see the arcs connecting it. And I will explain to you how this works. Usually then every automaton defines a language. This means this is the set of strings the automaton will accept. So a finite state automaton is composed of a set of vertices. These are the nodes and a set of arcs. These are the links. You see here the nodes, they are labeled by Q sub zero, Q sub one, and so on. And you see the arcs. And the labels on the arcs, this is usually the input symbol that the automaton reads, which means starting in an initial state, like for example, Q sub zero, the automaton reads a B, and by reading a B, it undergoes a transition to Q sub one. So as you see here, the words that can be recognized by exactly this kind of example are, for example, B, A, A, exclamation mark. And then you see Q4, it's, it's, uh, it's specially noted, so it's a double lined circle. This is the accepting state. Q4 here is the accepting state here. Um, if this state is reached by executing the automaton, then the input string is or has been accepted. What other kind of words can be accepted? You see here that by at Q3 you have an arc which also again leads to Q3 by reading an A. So it means you can read an infinite amount or an arbitrary amount of A's before then the exclamation mark comes. And of course you can think of a matching regular expression for that which would be BAA, then you have a plus sign for at least one double A, and then you have the exclamation mark. This would be the corresponding regular expression for exactly this kind of automaton. So you see here the strings accepted are for example B A A exclamation mark or B A A A A A exclamation mark and so on and so on and other kind of strings like for example A B C or exclamation mark B C D they will be not recognized simply because for them there is no according transition. So how do I note down or represent an automaton like that for a computer? Of course, I can't put simply the graph as a graph into the computer. What I do is, therefore, I encode the state transition with the help of a so-called state transition table. You see here on the right the state transition table for this finite state automaton. You see here, you have in the first column the set of states and then you have in the second row, you see the different input symbols that are available. And in that table, in that matrix, you see what happens, for example, if the automaton is in state Q sub zero 
And if now the input symbol B is read, then this table says it goes on with Q sub 1. So this is how the state transition table works. And you see for all the non-possible um, transitions, you see here the empty sign. So there is nothing going on, there is no transition if in state Q sub 0 an A is encountered. Nothing happens then. So we don't go or we don't proceed in any other state. Of course, we have to do this um, definition of a finite state automaton in a more formal way. Of course, we are computer scientists. So an FSA, which is a finite state automaton, is defined as a tuple. And the tuple contains first a set Q. And this set Q is the set of states. Usually this is a finite set. It consists of states Q sub 0, Q sub 1, and so on. And these are n states and n is a finite number. Then you have an alphabet, sigma, it's a finite set of input alphabet. So these are symbols which are read by the automaton. And of course also it's a finite set, a finite set of symbols. What you need then is a designated starting state. So this is then Q sub zero, this is our designated starting state. It can also be any other kind of state here, uh, because somewhere the automaton has to start. And if it starts, of course, it also has to come to an end. So then you have another set, which is F, and this is the set of final states. Because probably there is not only one accepting state, there can be an arbitrary number of accepting states in that automaton. So therefore, this is a set. And the set, of course, is a subset of Q, our set of overall existing states. And finally, what we need is the transition function. This is the function that defines what happens if I encounter in a specific state a specific symbol. So therefore, this function delta is defined on the set of states and the set of input alphabets, and it maps, of course, again to another state, so to the set of states. So delta applied on Q and I usually results in Q prime, and both Q and Q prime are elements of the set Q of states, while I is one of the input symbols. And this is the formalization of the finite state automaton. Okay, let's have a look at our example. You remember this BAA exclamation mark, BA, which is something like sheep talk? So here we have the formalization of that kind of automaton. We have an input set Q consisting of, we have one, two, three, four, five states, starting with Q sub zero until Q sub four. Then we have the input alphabet consisting of A, B and an exclamation mark. We have a designated start state, this is Q zero. And we have a set of finite states or accepting states and this is Q sub four. And then we have the transition function and the transition function is simply defined by the state transition table you see over here. And this defines then what happens if a specific symbol is encountered in a specific state, what is the subsequent state, and this is given by the state transition table. Okay, now let's go to the further analysis of a, a finite state automaton. How does it work? It works with a so-called de-recognize algorithm, and I will show you the algorithm that usually uh, works when an input string is read by a finite state automaton. So we start here in the very first state, in the initial state, which is, which is Q sub zero and which is right now our current state. We begin to read the input string at the pointer that is called here the index and you see current state is Q sub zero, index is B and then we go to the state transition table and we simply look if we are in state Q sub one and we read input B, what happens then? Okay, we should proceed to Q1, so we do that. You see the current state now is Q sub 1 and the index has proceeded to A. So Q sub 1 and input string A results in Q sub 2, which is then the next and subsequent state as you see here. Now the current state is Q sub 2. Again we read an A and this means by reading an A, we proceed according to the state transition table to Q sub 3. Now we are in Q sub 3. The index has proceeded again. We are reading an A. 
which means looking at the state transition table, we remain in state Q sub three. And then this means um, for the last uh, time we have read the exclamation uh, mark and therefore we proceed from Q sub three into the state Q sub four, which is our final state, which means exactly the string that we have read has been accepted. So this is the simple algorithm that shows us how exactly a finite state automaton works. So this is quite simple. Now, this kind of formal language that we are talking about is based on a model. A model that can both, that can generate as well as recognize exactly these strings or all strings that are given by its definition. And the nice thing is there, this kind of, let's say, representation of an automaton can describe also infinitely large sets with the help of a closed form. So you have this kind of automaton or a regular expression and then you can describe an infinite number of strings which can be recognized or generated based on that. So the formal language is a kind of model. So you see here next the sheep talk model M, uh, which is defined via the input alphabet, that is sigma, consisting of B, A and an exclamation mark. And then you define the formal language L of the model M. This is the formal language characterized by the model M. And this language, again, you can write as a set and there you put in all the strings that can be created with the help of the definition of exactly this kind of automaton. And this language then usually is a subset of the clean closure of the set of all potential possible strings which can be generated based on the input alphabet. So this is uh, the clean closure as you see here, it's also referred to as sigma star, is the infinite set of all strings that can be formed from sigma. So this usually is another kind of formalization of what we are doing here when we are talking about a formal language. But we have to take care. Formal languages, of course, are not natural languages. So what we want to do is, of course, we want to use this automaton, which is able to recognize formal languages, to analyze natural language. However, we can use these formal languages to model parts of natural languages. For example, we can model with the help of an automaton how phonology works, how morphology works or how specific parts of syntax work. And what I will show you here in this and the next part of the lecture is how exactly a finite state automaton can be applied uh, in the course of morphological analysis. So for this we have to extend our definition a bit because up to now we have talked about so-called deterministic finite state automatons. There are of course also so-called non-deterministic finite state automatons. Non-deterministic finite state automatons, they have the peculiar, peculiar property that, for example, it's possible from one state not only go to another state, but also without reading an input symbol to simply go to one of the connected states. So these are the so-called epsilon transitions. Epsilon transitions means you read an empty string and by reading an empty string you can hear like shown in that example, switch between Q sub three and Q sub two. So if an automaton contains so-called epsilon transitions, then it is a non-deterministic finite state automaton. In formal languages, usually then in computer science, you will learn that of course, there is always a deterministic finite state automaton, which can simulate a non-deterministic finite state automaton. So these two classes are more or less equivalent, but it's, um, much easier and more concise often to write down these kind of uh, automatons with the help of these epsilon transitions, as we will see. For the formal definition, definition just have a look at the uh, state transition table. There we have an additional column. It's here the outer right column, the epsilon column. And we have here a transition, for example, when we are in state Q3, then we have an epsilon transition to Q2, which means, um, Potentially, of course, you can go back to Q2 without reading any input string. On the other hand, if you are in Q sub 3 and if you read an exclamation mark, you can proceed or you will proceed also to the finite state, the accepting state Q sub 4. 
For this, we have to extend the state transition function, delta qi, which means now delta qi maps the set of states and the set of input symbols to the power set of, or any subset of the set of states. So therefore it's written to, uh, q, uh, two to the power of q, so it's the, uh, the power set of q, and which means delta qi now equals or resumes uh, to q prime, where q is an element of uh, big Q, and of course q prime is a subset of the set of states q. So this is the only difference, because now from one state you do not simply, by reading a symbol, go to another state, you can go to an entire subset of states via these epsilon transitions. Therefore this kind of representation is much more concise, as we will see. Okay, so now we are going to use this and I will show you how we can apply a non-deterministic finite state automaton in the course of morphological parsing or morphological analysis. So first of all, let's talk about what we need to construct a morphological parser. First of all, we need something like a lexicon where we have the list of all possible word stamps and all possible affixes. And of course, we need to have some properties of the words. We need to know whether this is a noun, whether this is a verb, and so on and so on, because we want to morphologically analyze or deconstruct the word that we encounter. Moreover, we need something which is called morphotactics. What is that? Morphotactics is a model of the morpheme ordering. This means, for example, for a plural S, um, usually this follows a noun. And the sequence there is noun, and then we have the plural affix s to declare that this is a plural. So you have a ordering, first the stem, then the suffix for the plural. This is called morphotactics. And then, for example, when we are talking about English language, we have also to take into account some orthographic rules, spelling rules for morpheme combinations. For example, if you use this plural s, with nouns that end in a Y, then usually for the plural form you have to substitute that Y by the combination of I and E. So for example for city, which ends in an I, if you do the plural via using the plural affix S, then it becomes cities, but not in the end with YS, in the end it's written with I, E, Yes. So this is an orthographic rule which has to be taken into consideration. And this three kind of constituents, they have to be taken into account if we want to build a morphological parser. So this has to be represented on the base of a finite state automaton. I give you a few examples. For example, if I want to um, recognize the word grace, I must have the possibility simply to determine or to recognize a word stem. So you have a starting state q sub 1 and then if you encounter a word stem you have to go to a finite state. Another uh, example, disgrace for example, there you have a prefix and then a stem which means okay you start in q sub 1, you have a prefix, you go to the next state and then you have a stem and then you go to the finite q2 accepting state. Graceful, there you have a stem and then you have a suffix, the other way around. Or you have disgraceful, starting with a prefix, then you have a stem, then you have a suffix before you end in an accepting state. So what you have to do is you have to combine these four kind of automatons to detect first words which only consist of a stem, to detect words which consist of a prefix and a stem, then to detect words which consist of a stem and followed by a prefix, or in the end all three together, prefix, stem and suffix. And you can do this by merging these automata to a finite or a non-deterministic finite state automaton. And this one, for example, is able to detect grace, disgraceful, uh, grace, uh, disgrace and graceful. Sorry, four, four uh, words here. So we start here in Q sub 1, uh, Q sub 0. And then, for example, if there is a prefix, like for example for disgrace or disgraceful, we continue to go to Q sub 1. Otherwise, if there is no prefix, we might also go to Q sub 1 by following the epsilon transition. Then there comes a stem for disgrace or disgraceful, then the second part is the stem 
for grays alone, we had first the epsilon transition and then the stem. Then we already are in Q sub 2, which is an accepting state, which says for grays, for example, okay, we're done. But if in cases like disgraceful, there follows a suffix, then we go to Q sub 3. So you see, I can combine all these automatons and I can merge them into one non-deterministic non finite state automaton. But of course, this is not really all. Also in English you have, for example, to uh, see that for uh, nominal inflections, for example, to form the plural, not only we have the plural S, we have lots of so-called irregular plural nouns, but also there are so-called irregular singular nouns and they nevertheless have to be determined. So therefore you need an automaton which is able, first of all, to determine what is a regular noun then, of course, for the regular noun to determine, okay, now we add a plural S, or also to start in the, um, in the initial state and then to determine, oh, this is an irregular plural noun, so therefore we can directly proceed to the accepting state. So also these things have to be taken into account when you buy or when you try to construct a finite state automaton for a natural language. Here, for example, you see an expanded finite state automaton for a few English nouns. And you can imagine if I want to include here all potential English nouns, this might result in a rather huge graph. Let's take a look at exactly this FSA. We start here in an initial state, then we continue, for example, if we uh, recognize a D, this is the upper path that we are following, then an O, then a G, which means we have the word dog, and then we want to go to the plural, okay, then we have to follow either the S, or if we do not want to go to the plural, if we take the singular, we follow the epsilon transition to the final accept, uh, accepting state. The same, for example, you see here for cat and cats, this is the second path, starting from above, and then we look at the lower two paths, first we have goose, which is the singular, and then we have geese, which is an irregular plural. So this graph, for example, already subsumes for two words, singular and plural, and then also it has an irregular noun where you also have singular and plural and accepts it in the end. But this is only a small example, and of course, we will see in the next lecture how really morphological analysis works based on the means of finite state automatons, but we will look at a special kind of these automatons which are called finite state transducers, which will give us also the exact morphological analysis, so which will tell us that this is a noun, that this is plural, and so on and so on. But you see this in the next lecture.